Hey, can you help me pump the brakes? I'm trying to bleed the brakes out there. No, I'm just doing dishes. I'm just about done. <sighs> Give me an hour. Hey, can you, uh, come on, I need my butt nut. Hey. hey can you... I just started watching my show. Are we done yet? Keep pumping. Sponsored by TRE 4x4 BC and Strikeforce67.ca, the official Canadian home of GoTrans, Canada's professional traction tool. Welcome back to Fab and Adventures, guys. Today we're replacing the wheel cylinders in the Samurai. And when you do the wheel cylinders, you know, you got to take the brakes apart, you got to break the brake lines off the wheel cylinders. So that means bleeding the brakes and it's a pain in the butt bleeding brakes by yourself. So I got on the internet and I started looking for ways, you know, the one man brake bleeders and blah, blah, blah. And I came across this thing on Amazon. It's called a reverse brake bleed system. Hopefully you can see that. And basically what it does is you bleed the brakes in the opposite direction. You attach this to your brake bleeder on your wheel cylinder and you pump fluid from your brake fluid uh, container you pump it backwards up to the master cylinder and you push the bubbles out and that's their theory is that the bubbles want to go up anyhow so you push it backwards so there's guys that are saying oh yeah you can bleed your brakes in 30 minutes with this thing and blah 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 it's awesome you know all the reviews that you see on amazon awesome this blah 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 that but you also see that they're flimsy and they break easy and it's a gimmick. We're gonna give it a go and try it out and we're gonna just see if it's actually the way to go. And if it works good, I'm gonna leave an Amazon affiliates link in the description below for you guys also to check out. Also sold at Napa, Kmart, Walmart, Canadian Tire, True Value, Home Hardware, Rona, Home Depot. And one more thing, got the new hoodies in. This here is the green and gray. The last video I put out, I was wearing the blue and gray. I put out a video before showing the black and gray. There's also a red and gray. Give me an email if you're interested in picking up a hoodie and helping support the channel. All right, so let's get after it here. Yeah. All right, so <laughs> I forgot to put my mic on when I described this before. I put the mic on now, I'll describe it again. So for those of you guys that don't know, this is your wheel cylinder. It's a brand new one now. There's the old one that I took out. So when you step on your brakes, you press on the master cylinder, it creates pressure in a piston in there. It presses your brake fluid through the lines, comes into this wheel cylinder, pushes both these little pistons out, and that pushes the brakes out against your drum, and then that's what actually stops you. It creates a friction and it stops you. So to take this off, there's this two little 10 millimeter bolt back here and you need to take your brake line off. And I removed this spring here just so I could pull my springs apart a little bit. And that's all you gotta do. Pull the old wheel cylinder out, put the new one in. Make sure you keep your connections, your brake lines, if there's dirt and stuff back there, clean the dirt off and everything. You don't wanna get no dirt and junk or rust in your brake system. So what we need to do is just this little cam here has to go in so the brakes compress. Then we can put our drum on. Pull him on with the with the nuts here again. And you don't want to bleed your brakes. Oops. And you don't want to bleed your brakes without your drum on because you're going to push your wheel cylinder apart. You'll push the little pistons right out of there and then you're gonna get dirt and junk and whatnot in there. So make sure before you bleed your brakes, you put your drums back on. All right guys, so for, for those of you that are familiar with working with cattle, this looks like a little Ivomec gun, you know, for pumping the uh, medicine on cattle. Let's see what it's got in here. It's got some little bit of hose and some adapters, maybe that looks like a little check valve or something. And another hose that attaches to a brake fluid container. And the actual gun. 
I don't know, it doesn't feel flimsy. It feels like it's made of good stuff. And then the quick startup diagram and a little user manual. I'm gonna have a read on this. And then I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. Hi Ron and Crystal, it's Darren from the Car Next Door YouTube channel in Salmon Arm, BC. This is my submission to your subscribers rides. It's a 1975 Land Cruiser FJ40. Hope you like it. Okay, we'll start from the bottom up on it. I did a two and a half inch Pro Comp lift, which I'll show you under the back side. Pro Comp lift and Pro Comp shocks, uh, just to get it a little bit off the ground. Riding on 33 inch KM3 BF Goodrich tires and original rims and hubcaps. Uh, the rims were a little skinny, so I'm pretty happy that uh, I picked a skinny tire uh, to fit on them. Lots of traction. Not on ice, definitely on snow and mud though. Um, these things dig. The bumpers were installed and fabricated by the original owner. He worked at a mine, so there's some, there's some mine belt material on there to help push. Uh, same thing on the back on the bumperettes. Some funny rubber material there. Debating keeping it on. I am keeping it as a bit of a driver. Uh, maybe one day I'll restore it and make it shine uh, from the undercarriage to the top. I do have a hard top, but I do like the look of the hard top a lot better, but having this soft top in the summer is a blast. I had a friend of mine build me this tailgate. I put it on the, I mounted it and put it on the hinges and stuff, but it's a, just a neat little swing open aluminum tailgate. I hooked it up to the uh, rear tire swing arm. Interior in this thing is in excellent condition. Original straps, holding on the booster seats. Uh, roll bar is in unreal condition. Seats are in great condition with the uh, original vinyl seat covers, original heater. I'm blown away at how hot it gets in here when that heater's running. Yeah, original floor mat, which is pretty cool. The dash is in great shape. Steering wheel, everything works on this thing. It's a blast to drive. We've taken it on a couple small tours, nothing crazy as of yet. Um, but I'm sure we'll, we'll get it stuck somewhere too. Pop the hood here for you. And then you can, we can take a quick look under the hood and see what I did for the engine. The hood's out of alignment a bit, so I have to crawl up here to give her a good pull as I open it up. Nicest thing about working on these and all the CJs is it's right to the back. It's great. So I completely uh, rebuilt the motor. Uh, I painted the block a light blue, and that's not stock, but it helps to capture any leaks and stuff like that. Uh, I put in an HEI distributor uh, instead of the old points and electronic ignition that it had originally. Uh, I also put in power steering. I just put in the power steering. In order to do that I had to relocate the the alternator uh, down here because of the power steering pump that I got mounted where the alternator was. New rad, uh, new master cylinder for the brakes. New master cylinder for the clutch. I just did that the other day. One more thing I wanted to show you inside the interior of this. You may have one on yours too, I'm not sure, but in the glove box, there is a small socket right in here at the very back. And that is pretty cool. It is a 12 volt socket and it is to feed power to this uh, factory trouble light. Um, everything with this Land Cruiser from stock 
I'll do a better video on it, but I'll show you everything that it came with. Uh, it came with the original trouble light. It's got about a 10 foot cord on it. And yeah, it plugs in to the back here of the, of the glove box. There's your trouble light. It can reach pretty much all the way around this truck. Go hang it on the, under the hood, under the dash, whatever, wherever you might need it, on your back in the mud underneath the chassis um, yeah just uh, one more cool little little feature that this came with it also has the original um, well, might as well use a trouble light to show you it has the original tool kit and jack that, uh, under the driver's seat I don't think I'll use that but uh, at least it's there it's kind of a, a neat piece if I ever want to show anybody Okay, so I read through the manual. I think I got her kind of figured out what we need to do. So it comes with a couple of adapters. There's like a small adapter and a big adapter to go onto your brake bleeder. And this is the one that came out of the old wheel cylinder. So the big one goes on pretty decently. The small one actually goes on real nice and firm. I think I'm gonna use the small one. And then, we basically, we put this together. You put this tube into the gun. Like that. The end of this tube. Got neat little fittings. They're just like a little hand screw together fitting. A little positive stop on them. This end screws into the front of the gun. Just like that. And then where you pump the fluid out to your brake cylinder, you just screw this little elbow on. And that's all there is to it. Then you stick this into your bottle of brake fluid and pump away. So what they say is to suck the fluid out of your master cylinder and you know just pump it into a waste container make sure you get all the air out of the system like pump some new fluid through the line through the system make sure you don't see no air bubbles then you're ready to go hook it onto your wheel cylinder uh, undo your brake bleeder there just a little bit and pump they say three to ten pumps should be enough to do it so uh let's go have at her all right so here's the old master cylinder take him off. I lost a bunch of fluid just when I pulled the lines off the brake uh, wheel cylinder and there's just a little bit of fluid in there so we'll kind of try and suck it out of there and see what happens. So the end of the hose that normally would go into your jug. Okay so what we're gonna do is we're going to put this in the new bottle push it in there so uh, it hangs in there real good. And then we're gonna squirt this into the old brake fluid bottle, which has fluid in it. And we just wanna get all the air out of this system, just like that. Now we put her onto the back. Now you squeeze your handle just a little bit. Make sure the fluid comes out. Now we'll just reach back here and we'll crack open our bleeder. Just like that. And slowly give her three pumps. Now we're just going to suck the fluid out of here so we can make sure we get a good bleed on the other wheel. All right, now we're going to go and pump fluid at the passenger rear tire. You should be able to watch the fluid come up in the master cylinder. Here we go. 
One, two, seven, eight. Now we'll check the brake pedal for how hard it is. Seems pretty hard. I think we'll just suck some fluid out of it and bleed them one more time and we should be good. All right guys, so if you've ever bled brakes by yourself, you know how much of a pain in the butt that is. I mean, you can't do it by yourself unless you have one of them one man brake bleeders or the vacuum style or whatever. <laughs> this thing worked great. I have no problems with it. It worked just like it was supposed to do. It doesn't feel cheap to me. Pushes the fluid just fine, sucks it out of the master cylinder just fine. Uh, it doesn't feel like it's gonna break on me anytime I'm squeezing it. Would I recommend it? Definitely. Would I buy it again? For sure, you know. Uh, make sure you guys check out the link in the description below. If you're gonna buy one, please use my link. Uh, I get a wee cut, doesn't cost you any more, and it helps out the channel just a little bit. And uh, one of the better things I've ever bought. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you guys next Friday.